There's one. A little bit better. When it comes to fall fishing, a little small finesse crankbait always will catch fish. Just imitates a small shad in the fall really, really well. And you can cover a lot of water with it, bounce it off wood. Run the bank with it. The fish was off a little stump. But just any type of small, this is not really a square bill, but just a small bait. You need a light rod. They're hard to cast, so I, I use my 611 century rods, so a jerk bait rod technically, but works really well for small crankbaits. And because uh, these are baits are really, really difficult to cast, but super effective also in the fall. These finesse crankbaits are inherently hard to cast just because they, they don't weigh very much. So you want light line. I use either 10 or 12 pound Yozuri T7 line. It uh, really depends on what I'm throwing around. 10's a little easier to cast, but 12 if you're around a lot of woods better. And uh, reel, like I said, I, use a, I still use a seven to one usually when I'm finesse cranking in the fall because you don't really need it to go that slow. So I use the Art Gravity Reel. These handle light baits really well, the G7. They uh, are definitely the farthest casting reel I've ever used. Yeah, without a doubt. And the rod's one of the most important things because if your rod doesn't load right, throwing these little bit of cranks, you just can't get it out there. When I'm throwing it, I like, I like a shorter rod. I use my 611 Century. It's actually intended for jerk baits, but it's a light tip rod that loads up a eighth ounce to quarter ounce crankbait real well. So you want a medium action. Some people use medium light, but I use my 611 Cobb Series Century Rod. It's just a finesse cranking slash jerkbait rod. Yeah, in the falls, I mean, they're feeding. So you can fish your crankbaits maybe a little quicker than you normally would. I, I use kind of, in the winter winter, I use a 5-4 ratio reel. In the fall, I like a seven to one. I mean, it's just your typical, like my all around reel and uh, keeps it moving pretty quick. Cause if they're there, they're gonna bite. Like generally you always crank with your rod tip down but when you're throwing a three foot diving crankbait and see one one five i actually usually crank with my rod up and it lets you kind of do that yo-yo to kind of get the debris off of it better when it's a lot colder like let's say you know that february maybe even march cranking targeting a lot of rock and stuff well the fall cranking is a little bit different because a lot of what you're targeting is more where the bait fish are. I mean, it could be in some rock and things like that, but I like to crank wood a lot and flats, like really shallow flats. They're always really good in the fall for cranking. And uh, when you're throwing these little finesse crankbaits like this, generally they're hitting the bottom the whole time on these big flats. You know, it might be one to three foot deep. So you're throwing a crankbait that goes, you know, that deep and it's plowing the bottom. So you tend to get debris and stuff on your crankbaits doing it. So the retrieve's pretty important for that fall fall time cranking is you have to keep your bait clean when you're plowing that kind of mushier bottom there's one that's around the end of a tree that's a little guy got him hooked kind of crazy but so what i was saying is a lot a lot of places this black debris kind of you get on your hooks and stuff i caught that one with it on there but when you're cranking these flats there's just a bunch of crud on the bottom for lack of a better word so when i'm cranking on these flats i kind of like to do a lot of kind of erratic action with my rod and that what that does if it gets stuff on your crankbait it gives a chance to come off like i don't just do a straight reel because you'll actually lose the vibrating especially when you're cranking these super shallow areas so i kind of do a lot of pulls and give it a little slack to let, let the bait kind of reset and some of that stuff will come off and when you feel it quit vibrating you have to give it little pops to keep it out of that mush Cause that a lot of times, other times of year, I'm cranking a lot of hard cover, but in the fall, I'm wherever the bait is. And a lot of times that's one to three foot deep flats. And wood's always really productive cranking in the fall. A lot of times I'll key on in on specific laydowns. One of the most common fall patterns for me anyway, is when you get back in a creek, back in a little pocket where there's a bunch of bait, is the fish will tend to suspend on the very end of the longest laydowns. Longest laydowns, longest docks, whatever it is. Like when I get to a long lay down, I really focus on the end, the outermost point of it, because the fish will sit there and kind of wait on those big pods of bait to come by. And they're always really likely areas to catch one. Whereas other times of year, I may target on the base of the lay down. But in the fall, right towards the end is usually the most likely area. By pausing the bait, these baits, 
like small square bills, some of these small crankbaits like this Yozuri crankbait I'm using, they float. So when you do that kind of pull and let it reset and float up a little bit, a lot of times they'll have like a pine needle or a leaf or something hung around the bill. It's a lot of times leaves in the fall. They're hung around the bill and that'll actually let it kind of float off and get that bait vibrating again. You're just trying to keep your bait vibrating the whole time when it's hitting the bottom, but it's hard to do. But you get a lot of wasted cast, but that keeps it cleaner for at least most of them.